Hi there and welcome to this lesson on lattice enthalpy. So in the last lesson we previously learnt about infrared spectroscopy and how we can use it to identify unknown organic compounds and how to do that. So pop back to that last video if you need a recap. This topic is quite different so we're going to be looking at thermodynamics. So on most syllabuses um, you would have come across enthalpy changes before, so when you were looking at Hess cycles, but we're going to look at some new types here, so I'm going to introduce some new ones. It's really important that you learn the definitions very carefully. We'll actually look more closely at the definitions in detail in the next lesson. But let's introduce enthalpy change again. So it is the change in heat energy of a substance at constant pressure. And here's an image that you may well recognise. This is calorimetry. So we're directly measuring an enthalpy change here experimentally. So Q equals MC delta T, all those calculations you've come across before. So if the enthalpy change is measured under standard conditions of temperature and pressure, we say that that's the standard enthalpy change. And the way we would note that is our delta H, and we put a little theta sign at the top there, and that means that we've under standard conditions. So here's a new type of enthalpy change that you may well not have come across before. It's the enthalpy of lattice formation, and of course it has a definition. So it's the standard enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic compound is formed from its gaseous ions. Now, if you're asked to define this in the exam, you of course have to say one mole anything in bold here, formed from its gaseous ions. It's really, really important. So an example here, so an enthalpy change of lattice formation is always exothermic, so it's always going to be a negative value. I'll give you an example. If we have um, a, a lithium ion in group one and a fluoride ion in group two, and of course, because of the definition, I need to ensure that I'm writing that they're gaseous, otherwise this is not an enthalpy change of lattice formation and they are going to form one mole of a solid ionic compound of lithium fluoride. And I then write that my enthalpy change, my lattice enthalpy change there is minus 1036. And of course our units of enthalpy are always kilojoules per mole. So if we know the enthalpy of lattice formation, then of course we know the enthalpy of lattice dissociation. So it's the standard enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic crystal lattice is fully dissociated into its gaseous ions. So I can just take the equation I used before and reverse it. So if I start with my solid lithium fluoride crystals and they are going to fully dissociate into their gaseous ions. And of course, I've got one mole of everything here. I mean, everything's in a one to one ratio, so it's a little bit easier to see. Now have a think, that number, it's going to be exactly the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So instead of being at minus 1036, it's going to be positive 1036. You've effectively got the opposite thing happening. So of dissociation is plus 1036. Of course, kilojoules per mole, get in the habit of always writing those units. The values for the enthalpy of lattice formation and lattice dissociation, the magnitude is always the same. So we saw it was 1036, but the only difference is with the enthalpy of lattice dissociation, the value is always positive, meaning it's endothermic. And for the enthalpy of lattice, or oh, this is such a tongue twister, formation is going to always be negative because it's an exothermic change. Why do we care about lattice enthalpies then? Well, they're very useful because they're used as a measure of the strength of ionic bonding. So the larger the magnitude of the number, so regardless whether it was positive or negative, if it's 1036 compared to 10, the larger that number is, the greater that value, the stronger the ionic lattice is. And that can give us a lot of information.